Hello everyone. Smoky skies again, right? Day after day after day, we just have those smoky conditions and we are going to see some improvements for some areas. It's going to come at a cost though, unfortunately, because what we're going to find is gusty winds and that's gonna elevate the fire danger. And a lot of people have been wondering, how do we get to this place where we've got hundreds of thousands of acres burning all over California? Now, given we have come off of a fairly significant drought just about a year and a half ago so we've got a lot of dry brush out there and our weather pattern is the same every year you get a high pressure ridge no rain for an extended period of time and so it's possible that a lot of brush is out there to burn and there's a lot of fuel as well which is going to be the second part of what we're going to be talking about for tonight um it was something that i heard today actually uh some officials were looking at would control burns help in areas that have a lot of fuel to burn? So basically kind of setting those backfires in a controlled environment to get rid of some of the fuel that's out there. Take, for instance, the bark beetle. It's killed hundreds of thousands of trees. So all of that little matchsticks that are ready to go up in flames. I know a lot of you out in the foothills have an opinion on that, but first, let me go ahead and show you the forecast as we get going on our Wednesday night into our Thursday. Okay, so I'm going to turn around so we can take a look at the forecast for one. Whoops, sorry, getting a little bumpy there, right? Uh, so this is what we've got. I wanted to show you this. I feel like it's very illustrative in terms of what we're looking at with this smoke. We've got so much coming in from the Mendocino complex that there's, there's no plume that's coming out that just shows how much of it is in the valley. However, for the Donnell fire, you can see how that smoke's just coming out and feeding right into much of the foothills and into the Sierra finally making its way all the way up towards Plumas County. There's the Ferguson fire, and then this is a new one, and it's actually two fires. One is called the Owens fire, and then there's another one that is called the, uh, I believe it's the Lions fire. One of them's for the National Weather, or um, the National Forest, and then the other one is being uh, helped by Cal Fire. Okay, so that's what we're basically looking at. Now you're wondering, okay, should I go out in the morning? Should I go out in the afternoon? Here's the smoke at 7 a.m., all right? We, we've got unhealthy for sensitive groups, certainly, in the valley much more though in the foothills so if you live in the foothills it's very tough to dig out of this even up towards there's Folsom Lake look at how much into Folsom El Dorado Cameron Park up towards Roseville Rockland Loomis and Lincoln very thick smoke uh, for the morning hours but now take a look at how that expands into the valley by five and six o'clock and we still have unhealthy air for places like Auburn, Placerville, Pollock Pines, Jackson, Sonora, Groveland, all of this is coming in from the numerous fires that are hitting us. All right, so Nick's saying, can you tell everybody the good news? <laughs> all right, at 7 a.m. tomorrow, we will have areas of smoke. That's undeniable. But as we head into about 6 p.m. for tomorrow, starting to see, look at how this plume starts to push east so for those folks in nevada not the greatest news there's the ferguson fire smoke kind of going off into nevada and then for the mendocino complex it is going to be pushing its way east but then makes more of a north turn okay the reason why and this is why i say it's kind of a double-edged sword with this here comes this low okay this is this big high this brings the heat so CG CJ wanting to know when we'll get the cooler temperatures it's coming this high has been causing a lot of problems it, intense heat for much of Southern California we've now, now got the holy fire that's burning and rapidly I should say and then what's gonna happen is here comes this low well the low is gonna start to move in and obviously we're gonna be ready for the change, but it brings breezy weather with it. And that means, here we go again, dangerous fire conditions, red flag warning back into effect, Thursday through Saturday, gusty winds and the potential for rapid fire spread. So we may get some relief from the smoke for a little bit, but if any new fires start, we're gonna be right back at it. Again, 
it's basically to the point where it's completely filled in the valley with smoke. And there's that Donnell fire heading up into the foothills. Uh, let's see. So I missed Angel's Camp. Anne said, I missed Angel's Camp. Yes, we definitely have the smoke in Angel's Camp, as you can see right here. This is just a recent view of how much we're looking at much of the foothills, the mother load, all seeing a tremendous amount of smoke. Uh, CJ also wanting to know any possible showers soon. Well, actually, for the Sierra, uh, slight chances we head into next week uh, of a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video, all right? Uh, oh, Tom saying drifting all the way up to Olympia all day. So sorry for everyone. Yes, it is been horrible. And actually, Tom, you bring up a good point here. Let me see if I can pull up uh, some video. I'm going to save this. I'm going to pull something else, else up here. Um, so I have been working on a couple of things, but one of the things that I wanted to show you was how far this smoke actually is traveling. It's going to take me a second to pull this up, and then I can show you. There we go. All right. Hang with me. What about Eagle Lake area? I would say everybody's getting the smoke pretty much. Okay, so here's a look at this. Now, Tom was mentioning all the way up to Olympia. So this is the total smoke, okay? And here's our bar graph up here, light to heavy. So kind of the blue is the light and heavy is going to be in the red. This is at 10 a.m. This is what we were seeing. Obviously, a lot in California. Now, as we move along in our time frame, you'll see that it is being carried all the way across the West, and then it's almost getting all the way across the country. Not in the deep concentrations that we've been seeing here locally, but we are seeing some of that smoke travel all the way over to the other side of the country by the jet stream, okay? That's winds that are over 200 miles per hour, easily picking up those fine little particles way over here on the West Coast and shooting them across the country, okay? So that's a look at that. What is in that smoke? Once it, once it starts to really burn things up, you can see we've got methanol, benzene, ozone, and noxious chemicals. That came from a study from Georgia Tech Mostly it's held up in that jet stream, but if it reaches the ground level, then we're getting all of that into our air that we're breathing. Okay? Okay, Susan, I'm seeing that you are starting to comment now about the idea of control burns. So let's take a look at this video right here. This is prescribed fire uh, from Cal Fire. And you can see in the distance here, we've got a lot of dead trees up there, okay? And here's some healthy trees. Well, what Cal Fire does is they, they put these burns in, so they start to back, put these backfires in right here. And this is, this is healthy brush, but it's, they need to kind of get it into the areas that are affected by bark beetle. Okay, so here we go. Here's the fire that they're starting to get into areas that have the potential to really provide explosive fire growth. Um, Susan was mentioning we have to let them go in and do the control burns and control those forests before it gets to this point again. Firefighters in the family, we can't keep facing this every year. I'm wondering what other people think about these control burns. You can see they're continuing to make their way through the forest here. Um, because I, it's controversial. Some people say, how could they do these, how could they burn things? But here you can see they're burning dry brush, and this is all, again, to help so that we don't get into the place that we are right now. Uh, CJ saying, I get controlled burns, but are they going to wait until we get through the bad air right now. That's a good point, CJ. Uh, they probably don't want to start anything right now just for the fear of, especially in the weather pattern that we're in right now, it'd be very difficult to do a control burn and probably keep that 
control. Okay. So that was, I just wanted to open up that discussion for people that are in those areas. Um, Craig saying Cal Fire does a better job than U.S. Forest Service. Um, I mean, we've got, we've got a situation now where it just feels like, especially for, let me see, this Mendocino complex fire, it is the biggest in state history. So here it is. And part of the reason why this has been so problematic is we've got these strong winds at the base and then the lighter winds aloft. And so when you, when you have this sort of reverse profile, usually you have those really strong winds up there, then you get these embers that can, that can fly out of here up to about a mile from the actual fire. Uh, Juan wanting to know when will this come to an end? Well, the good news is, is that we have this developing weather pattern. It's kind of good and bad news, but we've got this high pressure ridge that's pushing off to the east and behind it, the breezy weather. So the breezes are going to kick some of that smoke out and we'll take a look at that air quality again in the smoke pattern. But the flip side of that is that we go right back into a red flag warning, okay? So we're right back at it Thursday through Saturday, meaning we could find that rapid fire spread. So that's why I also wanted to talk about, do we feel that that rapid fire spread leads us to the discussion of it spreads rapidly because there's so much to burn. So do we do we have to do a better job of getting those controlled burns going in a time frame that it's safe to do so so that we get rid of all those trees that are dead up in the Sierra? I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of trees that in the Sequoia, the um, Sierra Nevada, they're dead. They're like little matchsticks just waiting to burn up. So we have that spark and if the if the winds start to carry it and inevitably it will if there's fuel it's going to burn and that's that's something that we're looking at possibly becoming more and more of a reality as we head into the next decade two decades that more and more of this fire spread will be heading northward so for, for places that are kind of on the border where we're right on the border of some rural areas and urban areas we're basically talking high fire danger and a lot of property at risk if there's not something done. And perhaps control burns are the way to do it. I'm not sure, but I know a lot of you, like I said, I know there's a lot of people that are in the foothills that can probably comment more about their feelings of that defensible space. Are your neighbors doing that? Or do they, do they need to do a better job of it? I, when, when I was driving around near Mendocino Complex, I was surprised how many people didn't have defensible space. And I'm thinking, that fire's not too far from here. And there's green and browned out grass all the way up to the roadside. I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested, like I said, to hear from people that are in the foothills, that are kind of on the edge of right where we see those big explosive fires, um, these mega fires that are popping up now. Uh, let's get back to what we're looking at right now. And again, the potential for more of that explosive fire growth coming in for tomorrow with gusty winds and rapid fire spread. Tom saying, absolutely control burns, sorry to say. Susan say, yes, Monica, yes, yes, yes. And, oh, CJ saying nobody does a good job clearing. Nobody does, it. oh, so what do they, they just let, so do they just let everything lie around once they do the control burns? I'm interested on the feedback on that. Um... Oh, Susan's saying that she's in Auburn and people are very cautious about it and doing a good job, which is good to hear. I mean, when you look at some of the containment lines and how explosive these have all been, um, like CJ says, we have to be proactive. Uh, Joe wanting to know, is the wind coming in from the southwest and wouldn't it blow all that smoke away? Well, Joe, unfortunately, the winds just aren't too strong right now. Uh, let me put up the winds to show you once we get into... I can try to pull up a topographical map so you can kind of see that one, once it gets over the coastal range and out of the Sierra into the valley, we're just a big bowl. So with winds only at about five miles per hour, nothing's going to blow all of that smoke out of here. So we're going to continue to stay with it. 
Um, as far as tonight, still looking at some smoke and then by 7 a.m. we've got much of it in the foothills and the Sierra and then some of it coming into the valley, but it'll be a pattern very similar to today. So we've got some smoke in the valley, but so much of this in the foothills, the mother load, um, the east side of the valley has been really sucked in. I'm sure many of you that are in Folsom, Roseville, Rockland, Sonora Angels Camp, <laughs> um, uh, Jackson, uh, Sutter Creek probably have been dealing with it day after day. Um, okay, so that's basically a look at, I know some of you have been wondering about the temperatures and let me show you what we're going to see here for the next five days. We'll be hovering in the 90s. Now keep in mind that because of the smoke, we've been a little bit on the cooler side where there's been really thick smoke. Okay, so just the fact of the matter is the sun can't get through all of that smoke, so it's been keeping us a little bit cooler. Um, Sharon wanted to know, are these burns what is causing the sitting the sitting of so many creatures in our neighborhoods. I've seen multiple, oh, multiple possums and it's scary. Yeah, absolutely. The, to be honest with you, Sharon, they're just trying to find a place to go. You know, with all this fire burning around us, uh, they're being forced out of their natural habitat. I saw a lot of deer over towards Clear Lake as well. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Susan's saying we had a weird, a weird clear night Saturday night. That's because the winds kicked up. So if the winds kick up enough, we'll see that smoke clear out. And you can see, you can also see how the winds really change the pattern of where that smoke goes. Okay, so we start off in the morning. It's just kind of hovering around the Donnell fire and it moves off to the east a little bit. And then look at by the afternoon, how much of that smoke is just pushed right up along Highway 50 and towards Tahoe. So again, winds are going to drive almost all of this, but look at how the pattern is starting to shift around the Mendocino complex. We're also getting some northward movement of this smoke off the Mendocino complex. Tony's saying we need to stop building in areas that are wooded. And that's part of the problem, Tony, is that we are rapidly expanding and that interface, you know, in between where we used to be rural and urban, there used to be a real defined line and we could let fires burn. That's not the case anymore. Think of Cameron Park, uh, even towards um, a, a Plymouth, uh, many of these areas that used to not be heavily populated are now starting to see population growth. We want the land, it's cheaper. and. Unfortunately, that's where we're seeing a lot of potential for fire growth. Uh, Karen saying, are the road crews either bulldozing dry grass along the roadways, highways before fire gets to them so fire doesn't jump the highway? Yeah, so that's all part of it. Once an active fire is in place, then they have to start doing all that clearing, much like what they would do with a control burn. So they're kind of back burning to make sure that if fire does start, it doesn't have anything to burn. They're trying to reduce all of that fuel. Um, oh, Dan saying, Mr. moved to Carson City last September. Miss you and Walt. Well, hello, Dan. Nice to, <laughs> nice to hear from you. Seeing you on, online. Uh, fires, oh, Susan saying our firefighters our firefighter says they are fighting fires now where they never did before because of that. Right, absolutely. So I did this story, oh, about, um, geez, it was last November. It was actually, quite frankly, after the Santa Rosa fires near Coffee Park. And I was driving around Folsom, and I'm seeing all this browned out grass, and I'm thinking, wow, we're about to put in huge development over there, plus... We've got Cameron Park, like I said, as you start driving up, Placerville, which is growing, all of these communities which are growing, which are in the foothills. And I asked Cal Fire, I said, does this scare you? Does, are you trying to figure out new ways to combat? Are we having to do more back burns, more control burns? And they said, all of that, yes. This is of great concern because before we could let fires burn and kind of do their natural thing. Now, we've got people in harm's way. So we're having to put a lot more crews out there to make sure that they're not, that, that 
people's homes and property uh, can yeah. potentially be saved yeah. and make sure they're not there. Get get out, get, get to safety. There's so many more evacuations and emergency um, uh, situations that are going on right now and making sure that people have the right resources as well. Technology is changing all of that. We have more ways to reach people and people aren't using the other resources that they used to. So your cell phone by the bed, um, make sure that you're in line of sight. If you're using a NOAA weather radio, have your car out of the garage. Electricity usually goes out when there's a fire. There's so many different precautions that we're having to take because of where we're living and how these fires are growing. I think I think it's an ongoing discussion. I really do. I feel like the Foothill community would be a great uh, kind of megaphone for this because you've dealt with it for many years. Uh, certainly the foothills and then obviously in the Sierra, but the Sierra, you almost feel like that's an inherent risk. When you start talking about the foothills and then almost the Eastern Valley, that really thin area right there, that's what's new. That's what's new. All the, uh, everybody moving into that and just the fire fighting efforts that have to go on and it's a, it's a change of tactics for certainly the National Forest Service and the U.S. Forest Service, I should say, and um, CAL FIRE when they talk about how they're starting to fight these fires. Okay, so let's get back to this here and so I can look at some of your comments here. Uh, Nick saying, it's only August, maybe we'll get lucky and get some rain in September. The smoke outside in the valley is horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Karen saying hello, East Coast friends. Hello, East Coast friends. We're on the West Coast. <laughs> uh, here's a look. At, I'll just wrap it up here. Here's a look at the smoke right now. And again, winds really drive where that smoke is headed. Um, we've got a new one that's popping up here. There's actually two down there. But look at that little smoke plume coming out of there. So, that's going to add to the problems for Yosemite. Um, then we've got, oh, Susan, hi, <laughs> nice to hear from you, Susan, I know, our babies, uh, we're, we're, let's see, were they born, right about the same time, um, so this was our smoke at 7 a.m., so here, there's a the time right there, the yellow is going to be slightly lighter, and then the orange and the red are going to be thicker, smoke, whoops, sorry, and then here it is at 5 p.m. and you can see how it fills in for the valley. I'll, sh I'll show you, actually, we even have, let's see, here's 6 p.m. That's what it looks like at 6 p.m. And almost the entire area, including Modesto, is starting to get into that unhealthy group, but all through the foothills. This is just almost a direct plume of smoke that's been penetrating much of this area and then we've got unhealthy for sensitive groups a little pocket here near woodland which is actually in the unhealthy for sensitive groups range but we're actually starting to see a lot of smoke coming in from that donnell fire so uh yeah not to go in terms of containment and of course that red flag warning goes right back into effect thursday through Saturday, gusty winds, rapid fire spread, plenty of fuel to burn still in much of the state. So take it easy out there. And uh, if you do have any comments about uh, the control burns and what we could do to mitigate, meaning limit how much burning we're seeing in California, welcome your comments here. All right, in the meantime, have a good night.